What's going on everyone? It's your friend Will. We're back. And we're going to do a little quick constructed. As much as uh, I hate to not have access to sideboard, this is going to be the, I guess, competitive mode of choice that they're pushing us into once they remove uh, competitive constructed. Interesting choices by Watsi, but I figure I might as well bite the bullet now and start getting used to decks that will perform well. So the bug gate that we featured in the last video I think this deck has a pretty good game one matchup, like probably against the field, uh, by virtue of being a deck that uses the graveyard uh, to grind or to finish the game quickly, and I think a lot of decks aren't going to have ways to interact with that. It's fairly immune to sweepers, um, though Settle the Wreckage obviously removing the creatures from play, exiling them, performs better. like pre-gift. Alright, on the play, I think we have to mulligan this. Alright, this we can keep. Uh, it's a little slow, but we have champion. And I think we'll take another champion, too. If they're kind of like green aggro, we have Brontodon as a stopper. Oh, so they might be playing the Explore deck we were playing the other day. Wow, look at these lands. Look at these perfects. Hmm. I don't think we want Elf. I think we want to keep this Champion of Wisps because we want to keep digging. So maybe we can just discard Swamp here. So here comes probably Jade Light Ranger to pump this to three. Oh, Tashana's Wayfinder. Miss. Ah, uh, darn. Oh, so they're just like a black-green... Straight up Black Green Explorer, though they're probably playing a variation on the starter deck that you get. Alright, let's spin again. Hostage Taker's a good one. So with these here, we just want to move as many creatures to the graveyard as possible. It looks to get a flip. So we have three in there, potentially four or five. We're going to Hostage Take next turn, I think. Unfortunately, we're just like one one creature short of playing gate and flipping it next turn. Oh, they opt not to attack with the Wayfinder here. That's really nice for us. Okay. Uh, Alright, I think we're not blocking this turn and taking the seven. Then depending on what we draw next turn, elf is a good one. So as we drew elf, I think we're just going to play gate and play elf. And we can hostage take off of a God Pharaoh's gift. This ensures that we're going to get maximum value out of jump blocking here. I think I'm okay with this. Let's discard the gift because we're pretty far away from playing it. Discard Hostage Taker. Discard Brontodon. 
land. Flip gift. Let's get the one out of our library. No, actually, yeah, let's get the one out of our graveyard. Elf. And I think we're even going to pop this Tomb Robber here. And we'll hostage take the walker. We actually have explore stuff. So playing this next turn and then bringing back the Merfolk Branch Walker gains us three. This has to survive, obviously, but it doesn't get hit by Fatal Push, importantly. Ooh. So let's gain the health. Yeah, we can send for ten. Nine. All right, sorry, budget deck. Rest in pieces. There's no way, like, we just get your whole cure rate. I think we just want to go two and two and make promote those as sixes. No. They're going to give something minus two, minus two. It's actually a pretty good turn for them. They get to kill the elf and the jade light. And they get to gain six. Oh, wow. So I guess I'm gonna just all right they scoop. I was gonna try to dig for another gear hulk. Just to like promote this elf into a reasonable attacker. But they weren't too interested. Cool. Um alright, so let's play the next one real quick. I think decks like this and probably decks like the paradoxical outcome are pretty good for this kind of like best of one gauntlet. Um, it, just because, to borrow a term that a lot of theorists use, like they're very polarized decks. I mean, that that is even God Pharaoh's gift is like less polarized, I guess, than say 
paradoxical outcome because that deck is just really trying to do its own thing. Whereas this still is like trying to build a board and attack, which is not fundamentally different from what other decks are trying to do. Oh, yeah, see, this is just a sick one. Hey, we're going to play Elves into Jade Light into Gear Hulk and probably just win. Yeah, look at that. If they have Tapland here, just forget about it. Yeah, GG. Actually, just game over. Uh. Hmm. Actually, drawing that next turn is not so bad. We can play that and Crane. After attacking for four. This could eat a seal away. I haven't played against like a legit blue white control deck in a while. So I expect that this will have seal away, whereas like a lot of the three color ones tend to be base blue black, splashing white just for Teferi. So you don't always have to play around that. But here I think this is just gonna get sealed away. Oh, okay. So then let's play our land so we can play around Syncopate. Disallowed. Look at that. Just like we drew it up. So now they now we reveal what's going on here. And disallowing looks a little silly. Unfortunately, them being blue-white means they're going to have a lot of ways to exile, which is not going to trigger the gate. I'll just pressure them. And I think we are actually strangely okay with them countering gate here because of the way their deck is probably set up and because we have a board. So if, if they counter gate here and then they untap and fumigate us, which I suspect is what's happening. Oh no. Alright, so now we're in Settle the Wreckage territory. I think what I want to do is pre-combat, I'm going to play this champion. If it gets countered, then we are free to attack. This card Minister and Hostage Taker, which I don't think are going to be very valuable. Alright, and we'll attack for five. I think we want to keep the Mana Elf. I expect we're going to get settled here. Yep, so if they settle us though, now it makes Fumigate worse. Because we'll have, we have lands in play for, um... to, uh, Eternalized Champion of Wits. And we also get the second main phase branch walk here. We can also now, we also now have lands if we just pick up a God Pharaoh's Gift off the top of our deck. Just drop it right into play. <sighs> we'll play the Aether Hub because they know about it. And I think what we're going to do is... Yeah. We're going to play this pre-combat. And just... Uh, hit everything on the board for one. If it gets countered, then... Uh, 
And we're just going to play exactly the same way we did last turn. Attack for five. If we get settled, then we still have a decent board. And if they trade one for one with something like a seal away or a cast out, it's just not that good for them here. We're also repping like disallow, which is funny. Okay. Fairly easy, 2-0 again. We didn't even do our thing that game. We just played like awesome value creatures, forced them to have answers, built a board. They got a little hamstrung by their uh, coming to play taps early. Like we got a lot of free damage in because they were just constantly down a mana despite going first. Um, yeah, let's do let's do one more. Those games are kind of quick. I was expecting that blue white one to go long. Opponent goes first, but I think we can keep this hand. Hopefully we just branch walk into good stuff. Oh, okay. Haven't played against this deck yet. This ballista might be decent if we can ramp into it for like two or three to kill a couple things. The one thing this deck is missing between the main deck and sideboard is a lot of ways way, ways to stabilize. I think it's like red deck win style red decks. I think the red black decks that are a little bit slower a little less burn heavy, it's you're okay. Like it still might not be an amazing matchup. We haven't run into it yet. Um, but I think just that you're not necessarily looking at like a turn four clock, and you have a decent shot at getting a gate set up. You have hostage takers to take out their their bigger drops, help you interact with the board. Versus like this type of deck where they're looking to do a lot of the damage to you on turns like this, like we're going to be looking to play like if we're lucky an elves and a branch walker next turn i wonder if they're just thinking about if they want to attack into this and risk losing their career wow that's exactly what they were thinking about So our draw, which is not that good, is getting a little bit lucky to be up against a deck that kept a one lander. This is what kind of makes best of one like this tough. Like this person probably has like a pretty. Did they mulligan? I don't know. I don't think they mulliganed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So they've only drawn once. So yeah, they did not mulligan. There's like maybe some consideration of a ballista for one there and popping this, but I think I'd rather like let's just assume they're gonna start top decking lands and then I'd rather have this for like a turn or two from now.
looks like they're pretty bricked here. Oh. No, they're just like playing some, I don't know, they're like not paying attention to the game. Okay. Yeah, I think rather than block, I'm just gonna play double branch walker. Chain Whirler is a little bit of a blowout. So we're fairly close to flipping. Close enough that I think it's even okay to do this. Chain Whirler. Discard Hostage Taker. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know we're flipping the gate, the quite I'm just thinking of whether or not I want to put these ballistas into the graveyard and cycle right now. I actually think I'd want to cycle one to put this champion of wits into the graveyard. So I think that might be what we're take bringing back this turn, yeah. Oh, let's get the one out of our library because we don't want to top deck it. I don't think we want to bring back the hostage taker yet cuz we want to be able to like use it. Cool, cool. So like next turn we can bring back the hostage taker and use it. They just had it the whole time. Good thing we kept this crane. Hmm. I think you just want to build a board here. I'm a little worried now that maybe they are the red black slower builds, which means we have to worry about things like Glorybringer. They can't even really attack, which is great. All right, let's dig for something. Whiff. This might be too conservative. Maybe I'm supposed to be attacking here. But I feel like I can't lose if I just hold back and find another gate.
this feels pretty good. All right, let's rumble with. Oh, we can't just rumble with one. It'll be a double block. Okay. No. Uh, the double block first strike. So we get to Crane plus Gear Hulk here. And I think we're just going to Gear Hulk up this Crane to start attacking for five with it. This play is a little susceptible to another Abrade. Or if they play Lightning Strike, they can just do it in response to the tokens but probably just making these flyers big and attacking is the way that we can close out the game from here. And we can save this hostage taker if they have like a glory bringer or something or a phoenix that we want to steal. So I think now that with the bo the ground locked up, we are not under pressure. Timeout used. Do I have a gear hook down here? I'll take the gate. So if I have a gear hook down here, we'll use the gate. All right, we'll use the gate next turn. I want to just attack this turn. Now if they abrade this or kill this in some way, they don't have that the upgrade for the gate. Chantra, yeah, so they're on the bigger black red version for sure. I'm gonna plus and see what they hit here. Minus four doesn't do very much. Or dealing for the minus three, like they can hit the gear hulk and then we get to bring the gear hulk back and make another crane big. They probably have to plus and look for unlicensed disintegration. And they missed. They hit, just hit land. That turn that they attacked with the Bomat Courier and just like gave it up. For, well, they didn't give it up for free. They gave it up and then they played another Chain Whirler, right? So I wonder how much they're missing these four cards right now, though. I guess if they if they had the abrade in hand at that point and their line was like, okay, let let me flip the gate, and they'll get one, you know, give us one activation, one trigger from the God Pharaoh's gift, and then destroy it. Like it's not that bad, maybe, but. This has not, I don't think this has worked out the way that they were expecting it would. Do I have another crane down here? No. Probably just taking an explore creature then. Oh, they let it trigger. They didn't set a stop in my main phase. Oh, maybe now is a good time to take hostage taker. Yeah, get a chain whirler off the board. Yeah, that unlocks all my attacks. They put their stop in the wrong place. They're, I mean, they're still like losing that game in two turns. Hey, spring to mind. Nice reward. Alright, so fairly easy 3-0. Fairly easy.
this deck feels pretty good. Not having to think about sideboarding, <laughs> actually, considering how I was saying in the last video that I had no idea how to sideboard. But yeah, this deck feels pretty good. Um, happy to be 3-0. And then t we're going to cut this one here because we're at about 30 minutes. I think three games is enough for one video. We'll be back with the next one. Maybe we'll try to finish off the run if we can just go for the straight 7-0. We'll see. But yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the deck. And uh, we'll be back soon.